Likewise. Uh, welcome to all the new people who came yes. for the first time as well. Uh, as well as all the people, um, also the people we have not seen for a long time. Um, so I'm just gonna start with the prayer. <coughs> Everybody hears me all the way in the back. Everyone hears me. Yes. Yes, uh, perfect. So Father God, we thank you so much. Uh, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Because we know that all of us are here only by your grace. Thank you for your shed blood. That allows us to have a relationship with you. So we come boldly before your throne today. Sprinkled by your blood. And we ask Holy Spirit that you will speak to us today. Speak to us through your word. Open our hearts. Open our ears. And open our eyes. So that we can be sensitive to your voice. And so that we can be receptive to your, to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the title of our message today is the vision of our church. C'est la division de notre église. So how many know the vision of our church? Combien oh. vous connaissez la division de notre église? La vision. 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 Certains d'entre vous ont été avec nous depuis longtemps. And have you ever asked yourself? Est-ce que vous êtes déjà demandé? What is our vision? C'est quoi notre vision? And those of you who have not been with us for a long time. Et ceux pour lesquels ça fait pas longtemps qu'ils sont parmi nous. Today you will discover our vision. Aujourd'hui vous allez découvrir notre vision. And maybe that'll allow you to decide whether you continue to be with us or not. Et peut-être cela va permettre va vous permettre de décider si vous voulez continuer avec nous ou pas. Now, when we talk about the vision of our church. Lorsqu'on parle de la vision de notre église, All you have to remember ce dont vous avez besoin de, de vous rappeler are two things. Ce sont deux choses. Two main things. Ce sont deux choses principales. The first thing la première is the great commandment. C'est les grands commandements. Everyone say the great commandment. The great commandment. Tous les grands commandements. The second thing la deuxième chose is the great commission. C'est la grande commission. Everyone say the great commission. The great commission. So to understand the vision of our church, you have to only remember these two things. Number one is what? The great commandment. And number two is what? The great commission. Okay. So the vision always has to be aligned with these two things. Alors la vision doit toujours être en ligne avec ces deux choses. So what are the two greatest commandments? Donc quels sont les deux plus grands commandements? The number one greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the greatest commandment. This is the only commandment that we have to keep. And so we're going to look at this commandment specifically because the first vision of our church is that every single member of this church would love God with all their hearts, with all their souls, and with all their minds. This is the foundation. This has to be established before anything. We see in the book of Revelation when Jesus is talking to the Ephesian church He's saying, he tells them, I see your works. I see your labor. I see your efforts. I see that you're being persecuted. I see that you're going out evangelizing. I see that you're preaching your gospel. You're praying for the sick. And you have a reputation of a people who are zealous for the Lord. But 
This one thing you have forsaken. Mais je vous reproche cette chose. This one thing you have neglected. Vous avez négligé cette chose. What is this thing that the, did this church neglected? C'était quoi cette chose que cette église avait négligé? They have forsaken their first love. Ils avaient oublié leur premier amour. And it is very important. <laughs> Et c'est très important. That us as a church. Que nous en tant qu'église. In the midst of all our labor. In the midst of all our evangelism, in the midst of all the effort that we put for the Lord, that we do not forsake our first love. That is the foundation to love God with all our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. Amen. Amen. How do we love God? The Bible tells us that we love God because He first loved us. So before loving God, you must first experience His love. Have you experienced God's love? The Bible says that God demonstrated His love in this. While you were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for your sins. One day I was asking God this question. God, I want to love you more. How can I love you? And what I heard of my spirit, he said, look at the cross. Look at what Jesus did. While you were an enemy of God, Jesus Christ died for your sins. You know, sometimes we have to just come back to this truth. Of what Jesus Christ did for us. The power of the cross. The power of his blood. The love that he showed us. Because there was no greater love than this. Then one should lay down his life for his friends. Not only did he did Jesus lay down his life for his friends. He laid down his life for his enemies. <laughs> because we were all enemies of the cross. Yeah. We were all dead in our transgressions and our sins. We were all slaves to sins. But Jesus chose to love a people. He chose to stretch forth his hands to people who hated God. People that would spit in his face every day. That would reject him every day. God chose to love us. And once we understand this love, that's how we can love God. That's why we respond to his love. That's why we obey God. You know, during this past retreat, the theme of the retreat was thou shalt love. So we learned what it meant to love God. We learned what it meant to love our neighbor. And I was very blessed by uh, one of the messages by our brother Kevin. He said, oftentimes we are motivated to go to heaven to avoid hell. <laughs> and I don't believe, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I, hell, I, the, I am afraid to go to hell. <laughs> That's why, you know, I'm motivated to obey God. But Paul said this. He said, I am hard pressed between these two options. Whether I will stay with you or I will die and be with Christ. Notice he said he didn't say that he wanted to go to heaven. <laughs> he said, I wanted to be with Christ. Because he wanted this intimacy with Christ. Because he was in love with Jesus. How many of us are in love with Jesus? If you have forsaken your first love, my friends, we need to get down on our knees. We need to come back to the cross. We need to come back to our first love. How many Christians today, they experience the love of God, but then the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things, it chokes the word. 
Ça dit étouffer la parole. It makes us unfruitful. Ça fait que la parole elle ne porte pas de fruits. It makes us forsake our first love. Ça fait en sorte qu'on oublie notre premier amour. And then we just get caught up in religion. Et ensuite on se retrouve dans la religion. We get caught up in works. On se retrouve dans le travail. But we must remember. Mais nous devons nous rappeler. That the foundation. De la fondation. Of all of Christianity. Toute la chrétienté. Is to love the Lord our God. C'est d'aimer le Seigneur ton Dieu. With all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. Tout ton cœur, ton âme et ta force. And loving God. Et aimer Dieu. It's not just loving with your mouth. C'est pas seulement l'aimer avec ta bouche. It's not just loving with your words. Mais c'est l'aimer avec ta bouche. But it's loving with your life. Mais c'est l'aimer avec ta vie. Because the Bible says. Parce que la Bible dit. That I desire obedience. Je désire l'obéissance. Rather than sacrifice. Au lieu de sacrifice. And what is it to love God? Ça veut dire quoi aimer Dieu? Jesus answered this question. Jésus a répondu à cette question. He said, If you love me. Then you will keep my commandments. Alors si Dieu ne fait pas mes commandements. He said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Il a dit pourquoi est-ce que vous m'appelez Seigneur, Seigneur? And you do not do what I say. Et vous ne faites pas ce que je vous demande. Because the Bible says that in the last days, many will say Lord, Lord. Plusieurs diront Seigneur, Seigneur. Many will come to Jesus. Plusieurs viendront à Christ. And they will say, Have we not prophesied in your name? Ils diront, Avons-nous pas prophétisé en ton nom? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Avons-nous pas chassé des démons en ton nom? Have we not done many miracles in your name? Avons-nous pas fait plusieurs miracles en ton nom? But this one thing they have forgotten. Cette seule chose qu'ils avaient oubliée. They did not. Have love for God. Il n'avait pas de l'amour pour Dieu. This has to be the foundation. Ceci doit être la fondation. Jesus called the Ephesian church to repentance. Jésus a appelé l'église d'Éphèse à se repentir. He said, I am happy that you are doing works. Il a dit, je suis heureux que vous fassiez des œuvres. He said, I am happy that you have sound doctrine. Il a dit, je suis heureux que vous ayez une bonne doctrine. He said, I am happy that you do not that you call out the false apostles. Je suis heureux que vous ne croyez pas aux faux prophètes. But this you have forgotten. Mais cette chose vous avez oublié. You have forsaken your first love. Vous avez oublié votre premier amour. My friends, if we have forsaken our first love, mes amis, si nous avons oublié notre premier amour, let us come back to this love. Revenons à cet amour. This is the foundation. Cela est la fondation. The vision of this church is that every single member would love the Lord our God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. Amen. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. How? Jesus told us to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is the golden rule. This is the Christian life. To love God and to love your neighbor. Because Jesus said this is how they will know that you are my disciples. By the love that you have for one another. And the Bible says do not love in word only but love in deed and in truth. What does this look like? When we look at the book of Acts, they give us a great example of a church that walked in love. They sold all their possessions. They distributed finances and goods among the people. According to the needs of the people. They broke bread every day. They fellowshiped every day. And when the people saw these group of people, they could see that they were different. They could see that they were not like the world. Because in the world it's all about me, me, me. But in the kingdom, it's about love. It's about seeking the interests of others above your own interests. And what does this look like today? How can we apply this practically today? The Bible says that the greatest love is that you lay down your life for your friends. In other words, the greatest manifestation of love is sacrifice. The disciples in the book of Acts, they sacrificed their money. They sacrificed their possessions for the sake of helping others. How can we apply this today? We are also to be generous with our money. If you have a brother that is in need, we don't just tell him God bless you and go your way. James preaches. James preaches exactly against this. He says, if you know to do good, 
faites pas, et que vous ne le faites then pas, alors vous êtes en train de pécher. Because we are not to be just hearers of the word. Car nous sommes pas appelés simplement. We are to be doers of the word. Nous sommes pas appelés simplement des doers de la parole. Alors comment est-ce qu'on peut appliquer ça? What can we sacrifice? Qu'est-ce qu'on peut sacrifier? For our fellow brothers. Pour nos frères et nos sœurs. We can sacrifice our time. On peut sacrifier notre temps. We can sacrifice our energy. On peut sacrifier notre énergie. We can sacrifice. Our money. On peut sacrifier notre argent. We could take a time out of our day to check on our brother and sister. On peut prendre un temps dans, durant la journée et voir comment va notre frère ou notre Ask them if they need prayer. Nous demander s'ils ont besoin de prière. Ask them why they haven't been to church. Nous demander pourquoi ils ne sont pas à l'église. Ask them why have they been distant. Nous demander pourquoi ça fait longtemps qu'ils sont Distant is what it means to love. C'est ça. Because so many people come to church, and they just want to receive, receive, receive. But Jesus said, "It is more blessed to give than to receive." Amen. Amen. This also falls under the vision of our church. We want to love God. We want every person to love God. And we would like every person. To love their neighbor. That we love each other. That we be known for our love for one another. That our love for one another would distinguish us from the world. Because we are not of this world. We are children of God. We represent Jesus. We are Jesus to the world. Nous sommes Jésus pour ce monde. And Jesus is love. Et Jésus est Amen. amour. Amen. 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 Now we're going to look at the second thing that we have to remember. Maintenant, nous allons regarder la deuxième chose qu'on doit euh, nous rappeler. Which is the Great Commission. Ce qui est la Grande Commission. And in the Gospels, Et dans les évangiles, there are four Gospels. Il y a quatre évangiles. And in each Gospel, dans chaque évangile, there is a commission. Il y a une commission. So we're going to look at each of these commissions. Nous allons regarder chacune de ces commissions. And we're going we're to look at the principles that it gives us. On va regarder les principes que cela nous donne. The first principle, le premier principe, we're going to take from Mark 16, 15. Nous allons prendre de Marc uh, 16, 15. The scripture says, la parole dit, when Jesus died and rose again, lorsque Jésus est mort et qu'il est he appeared to his disciples and he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, this is a very important principle that I would like every member of our church to understand that we are all called to preach the gospel and we are not called to pick and choose who we are to preach to. <laughs> we don't just preach to those people that are receptive to us or that seem like nice people. Jesus told us to preach the gospel to every creature because we want to win as many souls as possible. Because a lot of people today they spiritually Spiritualize evangelism a little bit too much. They think that they have to wait for a special leading or calling. They are waiting on a phone call from God. But God already gave us a letter. He said to go. So you don't need a leading to go. He already told you to go. He already told you to preach the gospel. Because being led by the Spirit is not just be to be to wait on a special goosebump or electricity or special feeling from the Holy Spirit. Being led by the Holy Spirit is to simply apply the Word of God. You will not be any more spiritual than when you're out preaching the gospel, when you're out feeding the poor, when you're out laying hands on the sick, when you're out loving people, this is what it means to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And he also says, in the same passage, that these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believe? Jesus said, these signs shall follow each and every one of you. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall cast out devils. 
animal. This shell drink any deadly poison. And it will not harm them. And they will lay hands on the sick. And the sick shall recover. And this is for every single believer. And the vision of this church is that every single member walks in the power of God. <laughs> Knows how to pray for the sick. Knows how to cast out devils. Knows how to walk in divine healing. Because this was a prophecy that Jesus gave. That these signs shall follow them that believe. Not them that are pastors. Not them that have a special calling. Not them that have a special gift. Not them that are specifically anointed by God. But these signs shall follow them that believe. And you are the fulfillment of this prophecy. Because Jesus was talking about you. He was not talking about his disciples. He was talking to his disciples about the believers that they would win. Which is you and me. So we are to preach the gospel with signs and wonders following. Amen. Because the Bible says that God confirmed his word with signs following. Yes. Amen. Amen. When we look at the commission in Luke, one thing that stands out to me is that Jesus said that this message the message that Jesus died and rose again and repentance for the remission of sins shall be preached to all nations. So an important principle to keep is that we preach the message of repentance. We cannot dilute the message of repentance. Because this was the message that was there from the beginning. Starting with John the Baptist. He said to repent and bear fruits worthy of repentance. Jesus said, when he started his ministry, the first words, first words out of his mouth, he said, repent and believe the gospel. And then we see Peter, after the day of Pentecost, what was his message? He said, repent, each and every one of you, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. And then we see the Apostle Paul, and he said, I preach to the Gentiles, repentance, that they, they would turn from their idols, and that they would turn to God, and they would repent, and that they would bear fruits worthy of repentance. And so somewhere along the way, as people continue to preach the gospel, all of a sudden, the word repentance became less and less popular. And it became more about grace, more about love, which is all, all good. But the Apostle Paul said that I have preached to you the full counsel of God. And that's why my blood, your blood is not on my hands. Because we are to preach the truth. Even if it's not comfortable. We preach against sin. We preach against homosexuality. We preach against anything that goes against God's holy standard. We must preach repentance. Amen. 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 Now Matthew 28. Jesus said, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. Now in this passage, he doesn't say anything about preaching. He doesn't say anything about praying for the sick. All he says is make disciples. So we are called to make disciples. And again, this is for every single member of the church. We are all called to be leaders. We are all called to teach people. Because Jesus said make disciples. Teaching them 
les enseignants to observe à observer everything that I have commanded you. toutes les choses que je vous ai enseignées. So every member of this church Alors chaque membre de cette église is called to be a leader. est appelé à être un leader. Is called to make disciples. est appelé à faire des disciples. Is called to lead cell groups. Et appelé à, et appelé à des This is, the, this is the continuation of the mission of Jesus. Ceci est la continuation du message de Jésus. Because Jesus did not come to plant a stationary church. Car Jésus n'est pas venu pour planter une église stationnaire. Jesus came to start a missionary movement. Jésus est venu pour commencer un mouvement missionnaire. And it's not just for the pastor. Et c'est pas juste pour le pasteur. It's for every single disciple. C'est pour chaque disciple. We are to continue his mission. Nous sommes appelés à continuer sa mission. Because, Because Jesus said, Car Jésus a dit, as the Father has sent me, comme le Père m'a envoyé, so I send you. Alors je vous envoie. So you are to be Jesus to the world. Alors vous devez être Jésus pour ce monde. And every single member of this church, et chaque membre de cette église is called to look like Jesus. This is the purpose of the five-fold ministry. The Bible says that God has given gifts to men. He has risen up He has risen up apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. For what? For what function? For the equipping of the saints pour équiper les saints for the edification of the body of Christ pour l'édification du corps de Christ so that we all come to the unity of the faith afin qu'on puisse tous venir à l'unité de la foi so that we all come to the experiential knowledge of the Son of God que nous venions tous à expérimenter euh, la connaissance du Fils de Dieu and so that we all come to the full mature stature of Christ et que nous arrivions à la stature complète de Christ That is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Ceci est le but des cinq ministères. The apostles les apôtres is not called to only plant churches. Ils ne sont pas appelés à planter des églises. They are called to teach you how to plant churches. Ils sont appelés à enseigner comment planter des églises. The evangelists is not evangelist. only is not only called to win souls. Ils sont appelés à gagner les âmes. They are called to teach you how to win souls. Ils sont appelés à vous à enseigner les églises à comment planter les âmes. The pastors is not only to pastor the church. Les pasteurs ne sont pas juste appelés à pasteur des églises. They are called you to call to teach you how to pastor. Ils sont appelés à vous enseigner à comment être un pasteur. The prophets are not just called to to give the word from God they are called to teach you how to hear from God so that you can also prophesy because we are all called to look like Jesus and this is the purpose of the church that every single member will all grow up in maturity that we, we will not be tossed to and fro by every, every wind of doctrine but, but that we would all look like Jesus the apostle Paul said this is why I labor this is why I work even to the point of exhaustion all of my effort is for this one purpose to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus Amen. this is our job to present the church as a spotless bride perfect in Christ Jesus So this is the vision of our church. That we would all love God. That we will all love our neighbor. That we will all preach the gospel. And that we will all grow up to look like Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, let's look at some numbers. What, what is our goal? What is our long-term goal? And what is our short-term goal? Okay. In short, in short, we want to win the city for Christ. We want to win the province for Christ. We want to win the nation for Christ. We want everyone to love God. We want the city of Montreal to love God. We want the city of Montreal to love their neighbors. We want the city of Montreal to preach the gospel. We want the city of Montreal to grow up to look like Jesus. We want to see revival. Hallelujah. Now, this is our goal. That I believe that God gave me. 
And with God, all things are possible. Yeah, Dieu, tout chose yeah. possible. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. Yes, c'est possible avec Dieu. Amen. We can win this city for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We can win this nation Amen. for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to see churches planted. In Montreal, there are 29 districts. Il y a 29 quartiers. Yeah, 29 neighborhoods. 29 quartiers. We want to see a church planted in every neighborhood of Montreal. Amen. 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 We want to see cell groups planted. In every neighborhood of Montreal, we want to see at least five cell groups. So that's 29 churches in Montreal. And that's 145 cell groups in Montreal. So that's five cell groups for each church. How many believe it's possible? Not only are we going to take Montreal, we're going to take Quebec, we're going to take Ottawa, we're going to take the nations, amen? But we are starting in Montreal. And this can be done in five years, amen? With Jesus, all things are possible. There are revivals happening all over the world. Why not here in Montreal? The ground is fertile. The city hasn't been taken yet. We're not building on another man's work. The harvest is ready. Amen. And God is just saying, whom shall I send? Who, who will answer the call? Who will bring revival? Who will advance the kingdom of God? Who will bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven? So that is the vision of our church. Not only are we going to take Canada, <laughs> we're going to take the US, we're going to take Africa, we're going to take Asia, we're going to take Australia, we're going to take the nation for Jesus. Hallelujah! We're going to look at our short-term short -term goal. By the end of this summer, I believe that we will be at least 60 people. Already we're about 30, 40. So 60 is not a difficult task. So we're going to we're gonna focus towards this goal. And we would like to also establish five cell groups by the end of the summer. So Right now, we have a few locations where we have our cell groups. But we would like to open cell groups in more different locations. So cell groups are like prayer Bible study groups. So if you are willing to open your home, so that we can start a cell group in your home, please let me know. Amen. So, does everybody understand the vision of our church? Amen. That is the general vision of our church. That every person would love God. That every person would love their neighbor. That every person would preach the gospel. That every person would grow up to look like Jesus. And that we would go and multiply. That we would be fruitful. That we would take our city. Take our province. Take our country. Take the nations. Jesus. Amen. We're all going to stand on our feet. And we're going to take a time to pray. Because when we, if we want to see a mighty move of God, everything has to be showered in prayer. Amen? Yes. So let us not forget the importance of prayer. Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Yes. We need to pray for revival. Yes. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our city. We need to pray for our governmental authorities. We need to pray for our nation. So 
We're gonna pray a few prayer topics. The first prayer topic is that we would come back to our first love. That every single member of our church would love God and we would not forsake our first love. We will not be distracted by all the activities. But we will come back to this love that we had for our God. Amen. So Amen. let us pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your love and grace and mercy, oh God. Pray for us, God. I 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 that if you died for me and died for me, I 